Hello and welcome. In today's class, we'll see how we can write a Java program to shift each row of a given matrix one step upwards. And uh, this question appeared in ISC Computer Science 2025 practical paper. So let's have a look at the question first. According to the question, we have to write a program to declare a matrix A of order M by N, where M is the number of rows and n is the number of columns, such that both m and n must be greater than 2 and less than 10. Allow the user to input integers into this matrix. Display appropriate error message for an invalid input. Next, we need to perform the following tasks on the matrix. We have to display the input matrix. We have to shift each row one step upwards so that the first row becomes the last row second row becomes the first row, and so on. Display the rotated matrix along with the highest element and its location in the matrix. So here are some examples. Here the number of rows is 3, the number of columns is 4, and these are the elements entered by the user in the matrix. And in the output, we can see over here that each row has shifted upwards by one step. Also, the highest element, which is 998, has been displayed along with its position, that is row index 0 and column index 3. In example 2, we have 4 rows and 3 columns, and these are the elements entered by the user. And in the output, we can see that each row has been shifted upwards by one step and the highest element is 341 here with position row index 2 and column index 1. And finally we have example 3 where the number of rows is 2 and the number of columns is 3 and that's why it displays sizes out of range in valid entry because the number of rows or the number of columns cannot be below 3. So this is the question. Let's start solving our program. So I've created a file shiftrows.java. Let's start with the import statement. Then we create a class shiftrows. And we create our main method. Inside main, we create a scanner object. Now we ask for the number of rows and columns from the user. So we write a print, we print a message m equals. So int m equals integer dot int dot next line. Next we input the value of the number of columns as n. So int n equals integer dot percent in dot next line. Now, once we have the number of rows and columns, we need to check whether the size is out of range or not. So if m is less than 3 or n is less than 3 or m is greater than 9 or n is greater than 9. If so, then we are printing the error message. We print sizes out of range. Invalid entry. And then we return from main. As a result, the program terminates because we exit from main. Otherwise, if we have a valid value for the rows and columns, then we can create our matrix now. So we can write int a equals new int m n. Also, 
to store the position of the greatest element in the matrix, we need to have a variable r that will store the row index and c that will store the column index. Initially, they will be zero. Now we ask the user to enter elements into the matrix. So we give a message now, enter elements in the matrix. So for this, we need to run a nested loop. So we write for i equals zero, less than m, i plus plus, and for j equals zero, j less than n, j plus plus, and we input uh, a i j equals integer dot percent in dot next line. Now, once we have done the input, we have to display the original matrix. So we can write system dot out dot print ln original matrix. And we also need to create a display function where we'll pass the array and this function will uh, display the matrix. So let's create this display function also public static void display int mat for i equals zero i is less than so if I write mat.length, I'll be able to access the number of rows for this matrix. And j equals zero, j less than, and if I write mat zero dot length, so this is how I can access the matrix column. So j plus plus. And I print. mat ij plus backslash t and outside the inner loop we give an empty print and then to change the row all right so let's come back to line 23 now from here once we have displayed the matrix now what we'll do we'll create a one dimensional array so int a equals new int n. Why n? Because n is the number of columns. So that will be the size of this one dimensional array. And in this array, we will store the first row elements so of the matrix. So we will write for i equals zero, i is less than n i plus plus and we can write small a with index i equals capital a so because it is the first row we are using the index zero here for the row and here it will be same as i for the column so that's how we have stored the first row in a one dimensional array now what we can do, we can start shifting the remaining rows one step upwards. So that's why now we'll write for i equals one, not from zero because we want to start from the second row. So i equals one, i less than m, i plus plus. And for j equals zero j less than n j plus plus so i will write a i minus one j equals a i and j 
So because I have put i minus 1, that means it will go one row upwards. Okay, so that's how the shifting will take place. And once all the rows are shifted except for the first one, first one has to be put in the last row. So we will run a separate loop for this one. So for i equals 0, i is less than n, i plus plus. So a m minus 1 i equals a of i. Now once this is done, we can now print the formed matrix after shifting. So we can write formed matrix after rotating or shifting, whatever you want to write. And you can just call the display function again and it will do the rest. So display. Now I need to find the greatest element also. So for that, I will again need to check each and every element. So again, I'm running a nested loop. So inside this nested loop, if my array ij happens to be greater than the array in R and C, so in that case, I will update R as i and C as j. And that's how I'll be able to find the location of the greatest element. So now I can print highest element uh, plus a, r and c. Uh, and I have to print the row and column also. So instead of print ln, I can divide it into two lines. I can use a print and then I can add one more line as print ln. And here I can write row r and column C and one bracket will close. So yes, this is how. And uh, now we end the statement and our program is complete. Uh, let's check the output. So if I enter, let's say three by three matrix, and I enter elements as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So you can see that the elements are shifted one step upwards. So 4, 5, 6 has come to the first row. 7, 8, 9 has come to the second row. And 1, 2, 3 has come to the last row. And 9 is the greatest element. So in the rotated matrix, it was present in... Uh, row 1 and column 2. So that's the result. So I hope you have understood this program. If you still have any questions, you can get in touch through comments. Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next class.